Greetings, citizens from the rolling hills of the bluegrass. Don't you love morning voice? It's so much more interesting and complicated than afternoon voice after your vocal cords have decided to, you know, shrivel up and die. You get this wonderful baritone or near bass. You can then, you know, <laughs> sound impressive, even though you may not necessarily be impressive. Forgive me, a, a lozenge to keep this going. So a lot has happened. I didn't say greetings to you from the new year like I had planned on. Because, again, I, I try not to be too repetitive whenever these things come about I, I want them to be singular as much as possible but in the aggregate your ability to binge means that you get to hear me make this excuse over and over again so I kind of create this loop of where I apologize for not posting a whole lot and then apologize for trying not to be redundant, but then end up being redundant because you can listen to all of them one right after the other. Liberals. It's a good question, what is a liberal anymore? It doesn't really make any sense because most liberals nowadays, it feels like they're sitting around just kind of punch drunk. If you go back to those whole boxer analogies and everything the idea is that you've been hit in the head so many times that you're just incoherent you're punch drunk you're listing about and or you're sitting on your backside and you have no idea what's going on but you're still present you're physically present in the moment but your mind is elsewhere and it's been put there because of repeated strikes over and over again from an outside party and that outside party when it comes to political terms and liberals are leftists and specifically who do we mean we mean socialists specifically and all of its various variations because the one thing that the American liberal has so quickly or consistently is the better word has so consistently shown itself to be is willing to ally with anyone to get a win and you got to remember that the american liberal is both the democrat and the republican party because those two parties are liberal in their foundation from the crown in england but they're not that anymore, of course. They've divided and split and re come, come back together and created whole new situations that they've tried to then have to talk themselves out of in order to become liberals and Republicans or Democrats and Republicans. But the Republicans have their wings that are liberalized feathers, right? The dual wings of the two of the one of the duopoly. Some of the winged feathers in the Republican Party are liberal, just like some of the wings in the Republican or the Democratic Party. Some of the feathers in its wings are conservative, whatever conservative means anymore. I don't know what they're conserving because in the end, they're both just looking for a win. They're the gambler at the table and they just need 21 to hit. They just got to get it to flip just one more time, one more bet. We can split it and we can try to play two at the same time, but we just need a win. Don't care where it comes from. Give me that chance is what they say. Don't care who I have to ally with in order to make it happen. And that's the reason why the liberal Democrats are confused out of their bloody minds. They can at the same time champion foreign interventionist policy while wanting to defund defensive policy here, a la the police. 
we can be the policemen of the world, but when it comes here, we don't want to be the policemen. We don't want to have any control over people's lives, which on the surface you go, hey, that sounds pretty good. But you realize, no, they just want a different kind of policeman. They still want to be able to come in and boss you around, but they have no interest in making sure you're free. And they're punch drunk. And you can kind of go back to the 1950s and maybe say that that's when it occurred because you had the end of World War One or World War Two. And the Russians or the Soviets were our allies. And you don't talk bad about your allies, especially four or five years after a massive war that ended with terrible amounts of humanity dead. You do not pop your newly minted ally that helped you defeat this great evil in the mouth. And so they decided, okay, we're going to ally and we can control them because we are, of course, the more moral and uh, quite honestly, more intelligent because we have liberalism as we have reformulated it in this country. We, of course, have liberalism and they have socialism and, you know, it's just not been tried. It's just not an idea that has any legs under it. But we, we liberals, we have this underneath us. We've got the goods to prove it. But they didn't take into account their children. Because their children said, hey, being able to take care of one another, being able to, you know, not have to listen to the preacher or the priest, not being, you know, shunned by society, being accepted, even though that was propaganda, being able to be accepted. Wow, this sounds amazing. All these liberals over here, they're kind of stodgy. They're, they're a little stuffy. They have the ideas of, you know, um, loyalty to liberty being vigilant in the defense of your rights. But but if we have this, this Soviet state, or maybe this anarchist state, we don't have to worry about that because it's, it's just going to be. And everyone will be taken care of. It's great. Well, I've got a lot of needs, and they say that they'll provide for them as long as I work. That's amazing. And their children slowly began to undermine them. Decade upon decade, until those children then became the people that were in power. And that's the reason why everyone has a hack. Has a little chip that they can get in on boomers, as they call them. The baby boomers. Because all of these men had come from home from war and saw the horrors of it. And decided we need a family some kind of thing to make the rest of this world make sense instead of the hideousness that I just witnessed over there in other parts of the world. And so, the liberal sits, punch drunk, trying to figure out what in the world is their place in all of this. And if you're listening to certain segments of the liberal population, it becomes almost like bitter. It becomes, you know, this weird, this weird snarky, um, almost like teenage, like <laughs> level of just, Ew, well, you know, eh, 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 eh. And they make, it just, it, uh, now, now this is going to sound like I'm, this is going a direction I don't want it to go. Let's stop that. Liberals. Liberals allying with anyone in order to win, because they think they can control them. Again, the nosy neighbor. Again, 
the tyrannical parent. I can control them. I can do it. I'm able to do these things, and that's precisely why I am the one who should lead. And anyone else is a Nazi communist or a communist anarchist or anyone else who just does not agree with me there there's something about it that's bad and super evil and i want it them to be gone and uh, yeah aren't, aren't i good it, it just it devolves into this <laughs> into this weird justification trial where liberals have to go hey remember us remember the constitution hey remember us we were there in 1776. Hey, remember us? We were there at the signing of the um, Constitution. Hey, remember us? Yes, we remember you because you were also there when our FDR decided that it was a good idea to try to really become the policeman of the world. We remember you there whenever LBJ decided, hey, we're going to make this great society. And we're not really going to have any uh, goal or direction. We're just going to make a really good speech. And not back it up with anything. Or, hey, Bill Clinton, you know, the, the era of big government is over. And then turns around and helps create more and more big government. And then George W. Bush comes in and does the same thing. And then Obama comes in and does the same thing. Right? And for all you Republicans out there, Trump comes in and doesn't shut down a thing. Sure, he makes some obstacles. He creates some issues that they cannot get around. Because it requires him to move and he's not going to do it. What I'm meaning is the, um, the not hiring of people for certain positions. But he didn't end anything. Nothing went away under Trump. Come on, we need people to go in there and start pruning some of this stuff out. And the question becomes, oh, well, what are the libertarians going to do? Well, we're probably not going to do anything. Except, you know, talk on microphones and shake our fists. But we're probably not going to do anything and we'll just allow more of this liberalism to continue. Of this kind of liberalism. I wish we had another word. For whatever in the world this this mashed potato sculpture that we've created, right? There's no sub that looks nice and is great, but the moment you touch it, it's just going to fall over and just land in a plop on the floor. So, uh, for the most part, as of right now, libertarians are really great at speeches. We do that. We bring that to the table. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I got nothing, you know, um, it's just, this, the, the impetus for this talk was that concept of the punch drunk liberal, because they don't know what's going on, the leftists ran in, right, in the 1950s, like I said, they just hammered them, and the liberals are like, oh, you're one of us, oh, okay, and it's been that way ever since. And more and more, that's that little pustule of socialism and communism has just start, just just bubbled away like sourdough bread, just bubble, 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 and now the whole of the liberal side of America are these people. And what do you do with them? Well, you have to, of course, challenge them. In the primaries. And who's the only people right now that has even a modicum of mechanism, political mechanism to do that? Well, unfortunately, it's the Republicans. And you have plenty of um, libertarians who are out there trying to get into the Republican Party. We know several that are there. You have Republicans who are Republicans. They still believe in the large state. But they really, really want to diminish the federal government's power, which a lot of people would accuse a lot of us in the Libertarian Party of being like. Right? The, 
the slightly uh, if minarchism came in sizes, we would be a size you know three minarchist, where zero is anarchist, one is you know size one minarchist, size two, three, four, five, and then say size ten minarchist, you actually flip over and just become a republican. So a size three, size two on a good day, minarchist. Because the question always comes back for me is two things. Maybe it's three. Probably two. Um, maybe three. Is who controls the nukes and how do we resolve disputes? How do we do these things? That's a lovely truck that I have no idea who it is. They just decided to blare past my window. But we don't edit around here. We just put it out there because you all want to know if you want to know that this is living without a script. Anyways, the nukes, resolution of conflict. Those are my two things that really, really have to get answered by our anarchist cousins. How are we going to deal with those things? And I know, I know the private system that a lot of you believe will work. That's fine. But I have to be consistent in my critique. Right? Right? If the socialists say, oh, don't worry about that, we'll figure it out when we get there. And I go, like hell we do. You're not going to dismantle the whole of society and then go, yeah, we'll work on it we'll, uh, later. Sorry, anarchists. I love you all. I love your free spirit. Well, not all of you anarchists, but we'll, we can get into that later. Um, I love your free spirit. And I love your wanting to do things but nuclear weapons kind of is a big issue it's a pretty big issue I would say and you can't just hand wave it away it's important so let's uh you know let's have some real discussion about that in these anarchist forums and really really hammer out how we figure out what to do with them But then the day-to-day -day conflict resolution. Oh, you scratched my car. Take you to small claims court. Some of that stuff, okay, that's easy to do. You start getting into the heavier crimes. Yeah. I'm going to need a lot more than, oh, well, we'll, you know, oh, well, we'll do private courts. No. No, I'm going to need more than just mechanism that already existed, but we've changed the name of it. I'm done. I'm done with that. Tell me how things are going to be different. I'm sorry. I can't go there with you. I'm not going to stop you from going there. And let's be clear, that's the whole point. It would be one thing if I said, I don't agree with you and you can't have it. Then it would go, okay, well now you're a status. I don't agree with you, but if you can make it work for yourself, go do it. Please. Show us. And maybe by your experiment, we can figure out what to do, what not to do. But just go do it. Go. Go do it. Go, 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 go. That was really about it. I don't really know of anything else I wanted to say. It's it's just, it's. I, I hope you all are having a good year as best as it can be I hope that for every Russian that goes sorry for every Ukrainian that goes 20 Russians go because they are the aggressor and it is the to be against aggressive war. Defensive war is one thing protecting yourself. And so from that, you go, yeah, Ukrainians beat the holy crap out of them. But they're your neighbors. And you should not have trusted the United States to protect you. Because they don't even protect their own people at times. So why are they going to protect all of you over there? Come on. Only you can protect yourself. 
And anyone who promises to do that for you is lying to you unless they live with you. And even then, there's a chance they'll fail. So anyone out there who has signed on to a promise from the United States that we'll protect you if you just do this for us, I tell you to arm the hell up. Which is a strange statement coming from a near pacifist. But you don't let people come in your house. So why in the world would you let people come across on an imaginary border and try to make you one of them? Hmm? Be safe out there as best you can. <laughs>